So then when it says, they will build houses and dwell in them, and they will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. So people are saying, and that's what will happen during the millennium. Well, I think that when God says there's going to be new heavens and new earth and goes on to talk about it, I think interpretively we should take every verse there that could be thought of as happening on a new earth and assume that's what it's talking about. It may also be able to talk about the millennium, but the only ones that are millennium only and can't be the new earth are those which by their nature could not happen, such as death on the new earth. Does that, does that make sense? So we're, we're dealing with a thorny interpretive problem and I'm trying to you know, explain how, how, you know, one way to do that and the one that I think is the best way. So then when I come to verse 21, I don't go, okay, now it's only millennium. We're not talking about new earth anymore. No, I think it's going on to talk about probably both because some things will apply to both, but they will build houses and dwell in them and they will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. You mean people could really build houses on the new earth? Well, think about it. We'll be in resurrection bodies on a resurrected earth. We'll have gifts, abilities, creativity. We'll have time. We'll have opportunity. Why not? We know we're going to eat and drink, right? We're told that actually we'll see a series of verses on that that are still coming up. But, um, but we're, we're going to eat and drink in the kingdom. Why not plant vineyards and eat their fruit? See, we're going to live in a world where there's no more curse. So what happens when the curse is gone? Oh, uh, no more plants grow now that the curse is gone. No, the curse came on the growing of vegetation and the earth and you'll toil over it and all of this kind of stuff. When the curse is reversed, it's not no more things that the curse was put upon, it's no more curse. So that the things the curse was put upon now thrive. So then when it says, no longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat, in other words, they won't have oppressors and people who conquer, and now, for moving on a little bit, for as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will lo- uh, long enjoy the work of their hands. Ooh, long enjoy. Okay, that, this is an idyllic state, but not a perfected state. So this sounds millennial. They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people, they will not toil in vain. The curse made, made it so that people could toil in vain. It's no more curse. Or bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. Before they are still speaking, I will hear. Verse 25, the wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. But dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Now, this is very interesting because if you take this whole passage related to the millennium, there's no more harm, there's no more destruction. Uh, Ultimately, there's going to be no more death that's going to be a perfected state. But Will there be any more harm that ever takes place to human beings during the millennial kingdom? Well, yeah, there's there's going to be people who die. And furthermore, there's going to be a final battle. And people will die in that battle. Not the righteous people, but not the followers of Jesus, but there will be death. And so, again, you have millennium explains some of how you could understand Isaiah 65, but you must stick with what it says it's about, the new earth, to explain some of the other things. And then some of the verses could go uh, either way. 